Now we have some missing number addition and subtraction problems. But this first question isn't really a missing number problem at all. We have something equals 29.5 plus 9.453. Now all we've got on the left of the equal sign is an answer box and it doesn't matter whether the equal sign is at the start like it is here or at the end like it usually is. We do the same thing. We just need to add 29.5 and 9.455. But because we're adding decimals, we need to remember that we don't line the digits up on the right hand side. Instead, what we do is line up the decimal points. Because if the decimal points are lined up, then the place values in our question, so our tens, ones, tenths, hundredths and thousandths will be lined up as well. Now we can write zeros in these empty squares because 29.500 is the same as 29.5. We haven't changed the question because all these zeros tell us is that we don't have any hundredths or thousandths in 29.5. Now we need to remember to copy the decimal point down into our answer so that our decimal points are all lined up. And now we can use column addition. 0 plus 3 is 3, 0 plus 5 is 5, 5 plus 4 is 9, 9 plus 9 is 18, so 1, 8, and 1 plus 2 is 3. So our answer is 38.953. Now something plus 2.074 equals 14.5. So here we have a missing addition problem and whenever we have a missing number in an addition we always use the inverse operation so we use subtraction to find our missing number. We need to work out 14.5 minus 2.074. So we have our decimal points lined up which means the place values in our question will be lined up as well. We can write zeros in these empty squares and copy the decimal point down into our answer. Now we can't do 0 minus 4 and if we go to the left we have a 0. So we go all the way over to our tenths column, 1 less, 1 in front and then again 1 less, 1 in front. Now 10 minus 4 is 6, 9 minus 7 is 2, 4 minus 0 is 4, 4 minus 2 is 2 and 1 minus nothing is 1. So our missing number is 12.426. Now something minus 1.082 equals 3.82. So here it's the first number of the subtraction or the minuend that's missing. And when it's the first number of a subtraction problem that's missing, we use the inverse operation. So we use addition to find our missing number. Because remember, subtraction problems can be read backwards as addition problems. So we can work out 3.82 plus 1.082 to find our missing number. We have our decimal points lined up. We can write zeros in empty squares and copy the decimal point down into our answer. Now 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 plus 8 is 10, so 1, 0. 1 plus 8 plus 0 is 9 and 3 plus 1 is 4. So our missing minuend is 4.902. Finally, 4.04 .04 minus something equals 3.978. So this time it's the second number in our subtraction, so the subtrahend that's missing. And when the subtrahend is missing, we still use subtraction to find our missing number. So we need to work out 4.04 .04 minus 3.978 and that will give us our missing number. Our decimal points are lined up so we can write a zero in this empty square and copy the decimal point down into our answer so that's lined up as well. We can't do zero minus eight so go to the left, one less, one in front, 10 minus eight is two. Now we can't do 3 minus 7 and when we go to the left we have a 0. So we go to the left again, 1 less 1 in front and again 
one less than 10 is 9, so we can put a 1 in front of the 3 in our hundredths to give us 13 hundredths. 13 minus 7 is 6, 9 minus 9 is 0, and 3 minus 3 is 0. So our missing subtrahend is 0.062. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope that was helpful. If you're a teacher or a parent then please subscribe or go to keystage2maths.com to download resources for this lesson and many more. That's all for now, I'll see you in the next video.